the WOW signal, as it's now called, is considered to be one of the best potential radio communications from an alien life form. Scientists have been tirelessly searching for signals from any civilization within the vast universe. But we don't know how other civilizations, especially inhabiting other galaxies, will communicate with us. We're living in the technological era where anything that happens in the universe can't go unnoticed. A recent incident has stirred the scientific community and has sent shockwaves through the very fabric of our existence. Scientists have detected a gravitational wave emitting from a black hole. This discovery has sent ripples of excitement in the scientific community, as scientists believe that these gravitational waves might be carrying a message from another civilization. Join us as we uncover the details of this discovery, what it tells us about the universe, why gravitational waves are considered a source of communication that can be used by advanced civilizations, and how aliens can use black holes as quantum computers. On Thursday, June 28th, the North American Nanohertz Observatory for Gravitational Waves, also known as Nanograv, unveiled the discovery of low-frequency gravitational waves, marking a historic breakthrough after 15 years of relentless searching. However, this isn't the initial detection of gravitational waves by humanity. Scientists have been spotting these ripples in the fabric of space using facilities like the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory of LIGO since 2015. LIGO, it's called Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. Just two weeks ago, they announced the first detection of these gravitational waves using a spectacular piece of equipment. There's actually two of them, one in Louisiana, the other in Washington State. So, keeping that in mind, why isn't this just another, undoubtedly impressive, detection of gravitational waves? The answer revolves around three interconnected qualities, the frequency, the wavelength, and the period of gravitational waves. And what these aspects reveal to scientists about the objects and events that initially set them rippling through space. Before delving further, let's first discuss, what exactly are gravitational waves? In 1915, Albert Einstein proposed a theory of gravity known as general relativity. According to this theory, objects with a mass create a warping effect of the fabric of space and time, which is unified as space-time, giving rise to gravity. General relativity also predicts that when objects accelerate, they produce ripples in space-time, known as gravitational waves. This phenomenon becomes significant when the acceleration involves massive entities such as supermassive black holes and neutron stars. Similar to electromagnetic radiation, gravitational waves exist across a spectrum of frequencies. High-frequency gravitational waves, similar to high-frequency light, possess shorter wavelengths and greater energy. On the other hand, low-frequency gravitational waves have longer wavelengths and are less energetic. Furthermore, low-frequency long-wave gravitational waves exhibit extended periods, representing the time it takes for one peak of the wave to pass a specific point to the next peak passing the same point. The announcement on June 28th reveals the inaugural identification of low-frequency gravitational waves. These waves are believed to emanate from binary supermassive black holes in the ancient cosmos, resembling an orchestra. Picture LIGO detecting the thunderous crash of symbols from intense events like collisions, while the nanograph low-frequency gravitational wave signal captures a subtle background harmony, akin to the gentle hum of violins. The robustness of the signal implies the existence of a gravitational wave orchestra, comprising hundreds of thousands or even millions of supermassive black hole binaries in the early universe. This discovery provides a new perspective on the gravitational universe, allowing us to explore the merging and growing of galaxies and their central black holes over time shared Scott Ransom, an astronomer from the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, NRAO, and one of the approximately 190 scientists collaborating with Nanograv. As black holes and neutron stars orbit each other, they generate a continuous flow of low-frequency gravitational waves, causing space-time to resonate like a gently struck bell. These emitted waves carry away angular momentum, 
prompting the black holes to draw closer. The proximity of orbiting objects determines the emission rate and the frequency of gravity radiation. The closer they are, the faster they emit gravitational waves, lose angular momentum, and spiral together until collision and merger occur. This forceful collision releases a surge of high-frequency gravitational waves racing through space. Beyond these explanations, there are also more exotic possibilities for the faint ripples in space-time. A portion of the signal might be a gravitational wave background predating even those early black hole pairs, originating from the Big Bang and the inception of the universe itself. It's interesting to know why nanograv can do what LIGO and LISA can't. Just as various telescopes are needed to observe different light frequencies in the electromagnetic spectrum, distinct gravitational wave detectors are required to hear diverse frequencies in this gravity-based radiation spectrum. Facilities like LIGO have effectively detected higher frequency gravitational waves resulting from collisions between black holes, neutron stars, and mixed mergers between the two. However, lower frequency gravitational waves have proven elusive. This challenge arises because the influence of gravitational waves is already minuscule, with nanograv estimating the impact on space-time as being as slight as around one part in one quadrillion. Despite its sensitivity, LIGO and its fellow ground-based gravitational wave observatories can't capture low-frequency gravitational waves. Even the forthcoming space-based gravitational wave detector, the Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, or LISA, will be unable to detect such signals. We've just had a very historic event with the successful detection of gravitational waves from the ground, and that was using these instruments called LIGO. Um, for detecting gravitational waves in space, you need a slightly different kind of detector, and the detector that we're all working towards has the name LISA for Laser Interferometer Space Antenna. So that's where we get the name LISA Pathfinder. The gravitational waves audible to LIGO and other ground-based detectors possess wavelengths of thousands of miles, roughly the size of Earth, with periods ranging from milliseconds to seconds. LISA will encompass wavelengths spanning millions to billions of miles, comparable to the distance from Earth to the Sun, or the distance from Earth to Pluto. The periods of these gravitational waves endure from seconds to hours. Nanograv, designed to perceive nanohertz frequencies, listens to gravitational waves with wavelengths on the scale of trillions of miles, extending across light years. According to Nanograv, these nanohertz gravitational waves may exhibit periods of months, years, or even decades. To make this detection possible, astronomers required a gravitational wave antenna spanning the entire galaxy and a highly precise time measurement system using a network of cosmic clocks. Enter nanograv. So how did nanograv pick up low-frequency waves? Utilizing three radio observatories, the now-defunct Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico, the Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia, and the very large array in New Mexico. Nanograv transformed 68 pulsars within the Milky Way into an extensive gravitational wave antenna, effectively covering the entire galaxy. This distinctive and sensitive gravitational wave detector is known as a pulsar timing array. Similar to all neutron stars, pulsars originate when massive stars deplete their nuclear fusion fuel halting the outward energy push and leading to the collapse of the star's core under its gravity. The outer layers are then ejected into a supernova explosion. The stellar core contracts to the point that neutron stars, with a mass ranging from that of the Sun to twice our star's mass, are compressed into a body no wider than an average city on Earth. Following the conservation of angular momentum, the reduction in diameter causes the rotation of the stellar remnant to spin up with some neutron stars spinning as rapidly as 700 times per second. Picture it like a figure skater pulling in their arms to increase their spin, but on an entirely different scale. The collapse of stellar cores brings another consequence. The magnetic field on the original star gets squeezed down, when magnetic field lines are crowded together, it amps up the strength of the magnetic field they form. Consequently, neutron stars boast some of the most potent magnetic fields in the known universe. These magnetic fields work to direct particles to the poles of pulsars, where they're expelled as jets at speeds approaching that of light from each pole.
pulsars seem to flicker on and off, the reason astronomers initially thought they were pulsating stars. But this results from the light generated by these jets turning towards us at incredibly precise regular intervals. This makes pulsars an excellent timing device. The compression and stretching of space-time caused by gravitational waves washing through it are expected to have a discernible impact on the timing of pulsars, either slowing them down or accelerating them as they pass. This creates a subtle difference in the arrival time of light from these pulsars. Due to the small scale of the effect, pulsar timing arrays must consist of numerous widely dispersed pulsars monitored over several years. For Nanograph, patience has finally paid off, with this effect on pulsars now uncovering a signal from low-frequency gravitational waves. Essentially, the Earth is slightly bobbing around, just a tad, on gravitational waves that span light years, explained Ransom. And we've observed this using an array of almost 70 millisecond pulsars scattered around our part of the Milky Way. The significance of this discovery lies in the detection of gravitational waves from previously unexplored sources, unveiling the presence of supermassive black hole binaries in the early universe. Scientists, while aware that most galaxies harbor supermassive black holes at their cores, remain uncertain about the growth mechanisms of these cosmic behemoths. One proposed mechanism involves a series of mergers between progressively larger black hole binary pairs. The low-frequency gravitational wave signal offers a glimpse into understanding how this process unfolded in the early universe, contributing to the formation of supermassive black holes with masses millions or even billions of times that of the Sun. Moreover, as these black holes are likely set on a collision course through the dance of galactic mergers, comprehending the black hole binary merger process enhances our insight into galaxy growth and the overall evolution of the universe. There's also a slim possibility that a minute portion of the gravitational wave signal detected by that pulsar timing array, spanning the size of the Milky Way, originates from gravitational waves generated at the inception of the Big Bang. These waves could have wavelengths ranging from the size of the Milky Way, around 100,000 light years, to the size of the Virgo supercluster of galaxies, around 100 million light years. This is exciting. The evidence reported by Nanograv shows once again that gravitational wave observations are opening up a whole new window onto the universe, remarked Thomas Hertog, a cosmologist from KU Leuven and a long-term collaborator of Stephen Hawking. While not involved in the study, Hertog expressed anticipation, stating, In the coming years and decades, we'll be patching together the entire history of the universe in great detail by listening to the hum of gravitational waves passing through our planet. Exciting times indeed. Regarding the future, Ransom outlined Nanograv's plan to identify a sensitive radio telescope in the Northern Hemisphere to replace the Arecibo telescope, which collapsed in December 2020. During this search, the collaboration will compare data with other pulsar timing arrays to pinpoint the origin of low-frequency gravitational wave signals. With ongoing observations, we should start detecting individual sources as distinct tones above this gravitational wave background. The sources can then be identified and studied using electromagnetic waves as well, introducing a new form of extragalactic multi-messenger astronomy, Ransom concluded. I'm very enthusiastic about this progress. We've dedicated over 15 years to this effort, and I'm not known for my patience. While gravitational waves themselves do not travel faster than the speed of light, their potential significance for interstellar communication and propulsion systems has captured the imaginations of scientists and science fiction enthusiasts alike. The primary method of communication between alien civilizations in the cosmos traditionally involves electromagnetic waves, such as radio waves. However, gravitational waves present an intriguing alternative. Unlike electromagnetic waves, gravitational waves can propagate through the vacuum of space without any significant loss of energy making them a potentially efficient means of long-distance communication. One key advantage of gravitational waves is their ability to pass through most obstacles without interference. Electromagnetic waves, on the other hand, can be blocked or scattered by celestial bodies, gas clouds, and other obstacles in space. Gravitational waves, being a property of space-time itself, can traverse these obstacles unhindered, providing a more reliable method of communication over vast cosmic distances. Moreover, 
gravitational waves could facilitate communication in regions of space where traditional electromagnetic signals might be attenuated or distorted. This is particularly relevant when considering the challenges posed by interstellar dust, gas, and other cosmic phenomena that can affect the clarity and strength of electromagnetic signals. Gravitational waves, being less susceptible to such interference, could offer a more robust communication channel. Some scientists have even proposed that gravitational waves can enable faster-than-light travel, but currently accepted scientific understanding prohibits objects with mass from reaching or exceeding the speed of light in a vacuum, as postulated by Einstein's theory of relativity. However, some speculative theories and concepts propose the manipulation of space-time itself to achieve a form of warping, or bending, that could, in theory, allow for faster-than-light travel. These ideas often involve creating a warp bubble around a spacecraft, effectively contracting space in front of it and expanding space behind it. While purely theoretical at this point, these concepts are inspired by the bending of space-time described in general relativity which is the same principle underlying the propagation of gravitational waves. Scientists are exploring the potential applications of gravitational waves in various fields, including astronomy, astrophysics, and cosmology. The detection of gravitational waves has already provided unprecedented insights into the nature of the universe, allowing scientists to observe cataclysmic events such as black hole mergers and neutron star collisions, this newfound ability to listen to the universe through gravitational waves opens up a new observational window that complements traditional electromagnetic observations. Alien civilizations, if they exist, might employ gravitational waves as a communication medium due to the unique advantages these waves offer. Unlike traditional electromagnetic signals, gravitational waves are not impeded by obstacles such as planets, stars, or interstellar dust clouds. This inherent property makes them an attractive choice for long-distance communication, allowing messages to traverse the cosmic landscape without the distortion or attenuation that electromagnetic waves might experience. One conceivable method by which aliens could generate gravitational waves for communication is through controlled manipulation of massive objects. According to Einstein's theory of general relativity, the acceleration of massive objects induces ripples in space-time, gravitational waves, by modulating the movement of these massive objects in a deliberate pattern, an advanced civilization could encode information into the resulting gravitational waves. Imagine a civilization with the capability to manipulate the orbits of celestial bodies or the dynamics of massive structures, creating intentional disturbances that propagate as gravitational waves. These carefully orchestrated perturbations could encode binary patterns or more complex information analogous to the way we encode data into the modulation of radio waves for communication right here on Earth. The advantage of using gravitational waves becomes even more apparent when considering the vast distances between stars. Traditional electromagnetic signals, such as radio waves, suffer from signal degradation over long distances due to the inverse square law, which dictates that the intensity of a signal diminishes with the square of the distance from the source. Gravitational waves, however, travel through space largely unaffected by distance, offering a potential solution to the challenge of maintaining communication over interstellar scales. Furthermore, the ability of gravitational waves to propagate through various mediums, including the vacuum of space, means that they can transmit messages across regions where electromagnetic signals might encounter obstacles or interference. This could be particularly advantageous for communication in complex cosmic environments, such as regions with high concentrations of interstellar gas and dust. The process of encoding information in gravitational waves would likely involve sophisticated technology and a deep understanding of gravitational physics. The alien civilization would need to master the manipulation of massive objects with precision, ensuring that the encoded messages are clear and decipherable at the receiving end. The challenge lies not only in generating gravitational waves, but also in developing the technology to detect and interpret these waves as intentional signals. Detection on our end would likely require advanced gravitational wave observatories, surpassing the sensitivity and precision of our current instruments. As we've seen with terrestrial gravitational wave detectors like LIGO and Virgo, detecting minute disturbances in space-time requires cutting-edge technology and careful calibration. 
extraterrestrial communication using gravitational waves would necessitate a level of sensitivity and specificity beyond what we currently possess. The idea of aliens employing gravitational waves for communication also raises the intriguing possibility of us intercepting or detecting such signals. Our current efforts to detect extraterrestrial intelligence focus primarily on scanning the electromagnetic spectrum for radio signals. However, the exploration of gravitational wave signals opens up a new avenue for the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Scientists engaged in SETI could develop algorithms and methods to analyze data from gravitational wave observatories, searching for patterns that deviate from the expected background noise. Detecting intentional gravitational wave signals from an alien civilization would undoubtedly be a monumental scientific achievement, potentially opening up a new era of interstellar communication and collaboration. Now let's discuss another idea that says advanced civilizations could use black holes as quantum computers. Now this idea introduces a mind-bending intersection of cutting-edge physics and speculative possibilities. While our current understanding of black holes is grounded in general relativity, the application of these cosmic entities as quantum computational devices pushes the boundaries of scientific imagination. Black holes formed by the gravitational collapse of massive stars, possess incredibly dense and compact cores known as singularities. These singularities are shrouded by the event horizon, a boundary beyond which nothing, not even light, can escape. Within the event horizon, classical physics breaks down, and the singularity becomes a region of extreme space-time curvature, raising intriguing questions about the interplay between general relativity and quantum physics. Quantum computers, on the other hand, leverage the principles of quantum mechanics to perform computations that classical computers find challenging or practically impossible. Quantum bits, or qubits, can exist in multiple states simultaneously, allowing quantum computers to explore a vast solution space in parallel and potentially solve certain problems exponentially faster than classical computers. The idea that black holes could serve as quantum computers is based on the possibility that the extreme conditions near the singularity may give rise to quantum effects that challenge our current understanding of physics. Some theoretical physicists have proposed that the information paradox, a long-standing puzzle in black hole physics, might find resolution through the application of quantum principles near the singularity. In the classical view of black holes, information that falls into a black hole is seemingly lost, violating the principles of quantum mechanics that dictate the preservation of information. However, if quantum effects near the singularity alter this scenario, black holes could potentially function as quantum computers capable of processing and storing vast amounts of information. The speculative nature of this concept lies in the uncertainty surrounding the nature of space-time near the singularity and the unification of quantum mechanics with general relativity, an area of physics still under exploration. While intriguing, the idea of using black holes as quantum computers currently lacks empirical support, and numerous theoretical challenges must be addressed before it can be considered within the realm of possibility. One significant hurdle is the development of a consistent framework that combines quantum mechanics and general relativity, a theory of quantum gravity. Such a theory would allow physicists to accurately describe the behavior of matter and space-time under the extreme conditions near a black hole singularity. Current attempts, such as string theory and loop quantum gravity, are still works in progress and have not provided a definitive resolution. If an advanced civilization were to use black holes as quantum computers, it would require an unparalleled level of technological mastery. Controlling and manipulating a black hole, particularly its innermost regions, poses challenges beyond our current technological capabilities. Moreover, the potential applications and benefits of using black holes as quantum computers remain speculative, as the nature of the computations and the accessibility of the information processed within a black hole are uncertain. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If so, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment to share your thoughts.